Hi there, welcome back to Ice Model. I'm Baron. We are in, I still don't know what it's called, uh, Dorn's, Key, Dwar Dorn's Deep, where the dwarves used to live, but you know, we didn't find any dwarves yet. Just monsters! I'm on it. And drow. Aurochs and drow and the like. And now we find. What's that? Looks like an Umber Hulk. But it has a name. Sablik Tan. Proceed no further, traveler, as I would speak with you. I didn't realize your kind could speak. I am not what you see. I was a master transmuter. A red wizard of Thay. My knowledge vast and are. How is it that you came to be in your current form? My name is was Sabalik Tan. Of my mistakes, one grew tired, used my precious magic to make that which I am. Having much confusion as days move on, must m tell you I am frightened. Why are you frightened? Aurochs that roam these passages. My passages are my creation. They have much contempt for me. I cannot leave my form, my home, punishment for my ambition. I derive pleasure for altering against their will. I have much regret. It's a little late now, isn't it? <sighs> How can the situation be rectified? What is done, is done. I cannot excuse my actions or my intents. I am not alone in guilt and I am consumed with hatred for one. Responsibility rests not on my soul alone. I am but a pawn. Tell me more of your situation. I must be brief as I grow tired. You can help others and help me. Within these caves the aurochs have a leader. Not only that role but another he fills. What is this, this other role? He is one of six. His presence and others here to prevent intrusion. Placed by the one. What would wrong myself and many many others? Without his existence, his minions will scatter, and the evil draw weaker. You want me to dispose of this leader? I'm afraid there may be no other way. I remain overcome with guilt. I cannot excuse my actions, however. My relevance in this world flickers and... Uh, Far greater injustice burns bright. I will see what I can do. I am very grateful and know your actions extend beyond my plight. Before you leave he will be in possession of a symbol, a badge. You must obtain this. Return with this and I will know you are true to your word. I will attempt to provide more insight then. I will return and I hope you don't turn into a totally stupid Umberhawk by then. Oh yeah 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 chatting with Umberhawks. So okay so th that's a wizard that you know transformed himself or was transformed into an umber hawk and now has to deal with the consequences reduced intelligence and all yeah well always be careful with those transformation spells I say you never know what you might look like after you finish the spell okay I think we're getting somewhere here do we need to buff I don't know Oh, and Atten. Yeah, well, hi, ready. Mr. Atten. I'm ready. 
Here. Oh, you like my slings? Orders? That's enough. Something wrong? You two hit them I'm low, listening. and the other two hit them high. Bingo! Three thousand XP. All right. Oh, well done. Are you ready for me? I oh, actually can't walk. Uh, I thought the way would be blocked by this add-in, but Let's no. Spill some blood. Oh, sucker. Yeah, now that um, the effect of the spells were off, uh, that mithril armor still gives me a uh, here the the paladin on armor class of minus eight. Awesome. You have my attention. This Hit ends it. now. The blade to its work. It's dead. Ready and waiting. You're somewhat hurt. Vita Mortis. Yes. I'm know. on it. Uh, where do we have to go? I have no idea. Uh, this appears to be a dead end. Okay. So we form up down here. Oh, looks like someone bought it here. Oh, I didn't want to pause, sorry. What do we get? A book and an axe. Battle axe? Really? Who would have thought? Battle axe plus three fatigue. Besides its superb craftsmanship, tiny ruins of power can be seen etched all along the surface. It's obvious a lot of time and effort went into its creation, and although no apparent at first, a slight blue glow can be seen emanating from the ruins. A 20% chance the target is slowed. It's a plus 3x. Awesome. Yeah, since we're here uh, in the realm of the dwarves, we get nice little axes. Kelebex Journal. I'm afraid I may have been duped. Bandoth indicated where I might find a door to the fort, but I was unable to find any trace of it. I was prepared to search late, later, search later on this evening, but a group of atoms have encamped in the passage and camped in the passage north of where I am now, and I am in no condition to be running past them. Hopefully, I will get another opportunity to search the old meeting hall of the dwarves. Earlier I uncovered some writings regarding a door within these walls that leads to a lower segment of this complex, and I can only assume that this room lies behind the doors I have yet the door I have yet to find. To make matters worse, the same writings inferred in that room contained a puzzle that was designed to keep the invaders from discovering and desecrating the cemetery and the forge. Perhaps Bandos can provide some more assistance. Who is Bandos? But I think we already found the door. Good, good, good. So we move on. Wait, that appears to be another dead end. Okay. Well, now the Athens are dead, but you are also dead, so that doesn't help you. What the fuck? Auroch Marauder. Well, then come here if you want to. And ding. Yeah, like I thought. So, I guess the Aurochs are just around the corner now. Are you ready No Auroch King though. Ah, skip it. Kill this one and stop running. There's enough for everybody. Death comes for you. Most foul class victory. See, not that bad. Kill this one. Guys, you didn't drop anything useful, right? Right. 
give me a target. You could heal the paladin. Vita, Mortis, wow. She surely has some healing power now. Vita, Mortis, I like that a what? lot. Understood. Wait. How do we get in here? Or oh, maybe like this. Yeah, I guess that would be the way. Do we still have time? Yeah, lots of time. All rocks. I just want to feast for the crows. Progress. How much XP till the next level? Two hundred thousand. Uh, no, I don't want to talk about that. Forty thousand. Thirty-nine thousand. That's okay. That's not okay, though. Oh, dang it. Ready. Okay, this appears to be the um, camp of the Auroch King, I guess. Krilak, who are you? What do you do here? I'm looking for the Auroch Chieftain. You have found him. What do you want? Um, I said I have come to obtain your badge. You will get nothing. You will die. Oh, you will die. I beg to differ. Um, okay. I'm here. You could try and summon those Demi Shadow monsters. Let's see what we get. What's that here? Goblin Elite. Yeah, well, here. okay. This one's mine. Time to trim this one down to size. Oh, he's dead already. It'll soon be a feast for the crows. Fine. The silent blade cuts best. So those goblin elite, well, they're nice cannon fodder, I guess. So, um, I think we got I'll them all. Krilax badge, note to Krilad, a two-handed sword and some money. Oh, wrong button, sorry. Did we get anything else? Just a sword, just a sword, just a sword and just a sword. No items hidden here, no. Note to Krilak. Chief Krilak. As you know by now, your master and creator is gone. Malavon, a uh, Sabalix associate, will now be handling all magical affairs in the dome north of the Artisans District. You are the strongest of your kind, and thus it is to you that I extend Sabalix's badge of lieutenancy. Use it as a symbol of the authority that I have loaned to you. If ever you and the others need to have an audience with me, you must bring your badge with you. Think of it as a key, one of six keys to a lock. Do not lose it. I am placing you and the other Aurochs in charge of defending the upper reaches of Dawn's Deep. It is your new home. Do with it what you wish, but always submit to my will or and to the will of Il Ilmata. Your nearest peer is Carrick Frostbeard in Worm's Tooth. If you are in need of assistance, call upon him and his kin for aid. Defend his stronghold with your lives. For if you survive in failure, your suffering will be monumental. If you have trouble understanding any portion of this letter, have Edina. What? Edinira? Is it an E, an e or an C? Adinirak? Or one of the other draw mercenaries explain it to you. In the blood of our father, 
all B P. Okay. Your motto. All B P. Your motto. Revered brother Pokelin? That would be all P. But Imata is is a good god? Weird. A two handed sword. Wrong item type, really. So we need those badges. We need six of those apparently. Cairn's Blade. Named for its ability to lay warriors low, the Cairn Blade was used by the mercenary Adel Cairn. Cairn was a skilled heavy infantryman. He and his company, Cairn Breakers, uh, hired themselves out to all sorts of warlords, bandits, wizards and religious leaders. They were typically placed at the front of the battlefield where they would intercept charging heavy cavalry units and break their formation. Kern died in 1054 uh, DR when he accidentally killed the horse of a heavily armored four. The horse fell on top of Kern, killing him. In the madness of the battle that followed, most of his comrades were rooted. Though Kern's body was never found, a group that had employed him at the time, the Church of Helm, recovered his distinctive sword. It's a plus four weapon, actually. A great sword. Yeah, very very nice, but the problem is I'm not proficient with great swords. And I don't want to, you know, lose the shield. Why can't I put a note in here? Could I put a note in here? No. Weird. Okay, Orders. so I guess we should return to that um, uh, Umber Hulk. Mage turned Umber Hulk. We get 35,000 XP for the badge, and how much XP did we get for killing the chieftain? We got 3,000, I guess, for the. Yeah, 3,000. That's not really much, but okay. What do you have to say now? Greetings. Again, traveler. I have disposed of the Auric Chieftain and acquired his badge. I am forever in debt to you. I cannot speak much longer. I must tell you that each of the six have such a badge. Should you go in search of him, you will need to obtain each of them. I must rest. And we get a juicy 56,000 experience, which is awesome. Goodbye, Selbrick. Uh, where, where are you going? Uh, I don't care, truth be told. But we need a lot more experience if we want to level again. Oh, yeah, take a look at that. The thief is going to level soon. Oh, but not the mage. Okay, now here we had that door. Got it. What do we have here? This is a hammer that is, you know, hammering on an ambush, I guess. That are two axes, I guess. It's always the same symbol as the way I see it. And those are like two rings. Is it a ring? Or is it two rings? Ah, I don't know. Okay, hammer and embers, axes and rings. Don't be stupid. Get in here. Okay. I'm listening. Done. Here we have that thing in large. There are symbols here. I guess we have to step on the right symbol because if you step on the wrong one, uh, you get hurt. So here's a hammer on an ambush. 
You hear a loud click followed by 11 similar sounding clicks echoing throughout the room. Okay, now we need two axes. Here are the two rings. Okay, so it is two rings. Do you see two axes anywhere? No, 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 don't step on it. <sighs> are those two axes here? Those are... I don't know. Well, if you step on the wrong thing, that happens here. Oh, sucker. So, hmm? Ready. Done. Okay, it was right. So it's not two axes, it's actually it's two... I don't know what it is. Two hooks? And now we need that thing here. Okay. Finally, you hear a loud clattering coming from the round table room. What do here. we get? So I guess we have to leave again. And there are probably a lot of monsters in there now. Or maybe not. What now? What's that? Oh. Done. Um we get get fifty six a uh, thousand experience points Tolpan leveled and something changed but what? that's new no that's not new what changed? oh another weapon proficiency point yeah well what could you use? <sighs> I don't know. Quarter staffs, for instance. So now staff is at 100%. Now I'm going to raise pickpockets to 100. And then I'm going to distribute it everything evenly. Um, do we have to go in here again? Hey. I don't see that anything changed here. You have, must gather your party before venturing forth. I know. Oh, yes. Progress, my friends. Progress. We have a stair. I'll handle it. Okay. This massive gear mechanism for the retractable stairwell. This massive gear mech. The massive gear mechanism for the retractable stairwell. It is still creaking from. The recent operation. Okay. Well, it looks like somebody bought it here. Another scroll. Tverse note. This trap has left me for dead, but it is just as well. I have felt the evil within me since the moment I stepped foot in this crypt. My actions no longer my own. Uh, my thoughts confused, my will gone. Perhaps another will discover the disturbance before it manages to overcome them. I found another route through a gaping hole in one of the prison cells in the auroch infested area above this chamber. But that led to yet more of their foul kind, a large grotesque beast that I could have sworn was speaking with me. Perhaps the evil was within my mind even then. Okay, so he obviously met that mage turned umberhawk. And we're not supposed to go in here, or what? Okay. Got it. Where are we now? This beautiful monument appears to be appears to represent dwarven craftsmanship and the art of metallurgy. Metallurgy, metallurgy, whatever. It also seems to have at one time been something functional. 
you suddenly feel very very cold what's wrong with you oh hi defiler you have come to desecrate the remains of our home uh, no, no, absolutely not. Then why do you disturb the, this temple of Moradin? <sighs> I was hoping to learn more of the conflict that occurred within this area. Two catastrophes occurred within Dawn's Deep. The first was the destruction of our community at the hand of the orcs. More recently, there has been the occupation of our cemetery, the Tears of the Dead, by the Necrom and the Terrican. Tell me about the destruction of your community. Throughout the history of Dawns, we've always had uh, to contend with the Orc hordes that threatened our way of life. However, thanks to inspired diplomo diplomacy between the leaders of our community and the Elves of the Severe at Hand, we forged an alliance that kept both of our homes safe from harm. What happened? Corruption from within led to a falling out between our peoples. No longer organized into an effective, cohesive whole, it was only a matter of time before the orcs overran both settlements. What was the cause of the corruption? I am not certain, but it was apparent, at least from our perspective, that someone was deliberately attempting to seed mistrust between the dwarven and elven communities. When the orcs began appearing far better equipped than in times previous, the elves began to suspect that dwarven smithies were in league with the horde. Why would they think you'd supply your enemies with weapons? The elves felt we could not control our appetite for gold, so we were accused of providing the orcs with superior armament. Later, the elves took the accusations a step further and accused of us arming the orcs with the intention of having them destroyed as a weird hand. Well, who was providing the orcs with arms? Not any dwarf within Dawn's Deep, I can tell you that much. We were warriors, not betrayers. If truth be told, I believe both communities were deceived by someone within one of our own families. I know not who, but I hope that when that person meets their end, they feel the pain of every dwarven elf that lost their lives. Okay. I, I never believed actually that the dwarves here would actually sell weapons to their enemies. I mean, there's no sense in making money if you're going to die, then you can't spend it, so what the fuck. I had some questions I wish to ask you. Certainly, what would you like to know? What can you tell me about Terrican? Terrican is a wretched necromancer that came to dawn shortly after the strife that put an end to our community. He was aware of the tragedy that gripped uh, Dawn's deep and knew it would serve as fertile ground to continue his research. What is he researching? During the construction of the deep, we had the misfortune of uncovering a cavern that housed an ancient vortex from the negative energy plane. Now I don't know if some being from that plane felt our presence or if the vortex itself was disturbed by the intrusion, but shortly thereafter uh, undead began to appear. And these undead invaded Dawn's Deep? At first it was merely a skeleton or two, nothing we couldn't handle, but over time we received more and more reports of undead sightings. In the end I don't think any of us were prepared for what would become known as the Battle of the Dead. How did the battle begin? One morning our community awoke to the screams of the son of Jemoth. He had been playing with some, playing within some of the caves near the forge and claimed he had seen a small group of skeletons. We sent a few men down to investigate. They returned, badly wounded. What had they found? Hundreds of skeletons, zombies, ghouls and other undead had suddenly appeared in the Vortis cave preparing to attack the settlement. With time working against us, we assembled our remaining soldiers and went forth to vanquish the deceased. But hundreds of undead with even greater numbers to follow, the dwarves would have been greatly outnumbered. No, dwar no dawn's dwarf would concede defeat while our community was threatened. Our wounded began to accumulate, and many our brethren joined their attackers in spiritual unrest that day. Just as it appeared that we might have to retreat, a miracle occurred. A miracle? From within the tides of flesh and bone emerged Jemoth, hacking at the dead around him with a fevered glee, bellowing with laughter. Laughter? Laughter? Laughter. 
With each swing of his weapon, he, the undead around him disintegrated, regardless of whether he struck them or not. It was a beautiful sight to see, my friend. So the undead fell around him just by his presence. How was how is that possible? Jemmes and our community were touched by Moradin that day. We later discovered the waters that had brought forth the undead were somehow reversed, returning the spirits to their home within the plane of negative energy. And Terrigan, then Terrigan came along. As a necromancer, he must have heard about the virtues, correct? Yes, once our community no longer inhabited these chambers, Terrigan took up residence in the Hall of Heroes with a determination to restore the waters. He is convinced that if he unlocks its secrets, he will be able to manipulate other waters throughout Faron. How? It seems the energies of the waters would kill any man that approached it. Terrigan knew no mortal man could ever master the waters. Shortly after his arrival in our home, he began preparing himself for the rituals necessary to become a leech. Fortunately, Terrigan must have neglected some of the proper enchantments, as the powers he wields are inferior to much of his kind. If so, can you stop him? Terrigan is much more powerful than I. I am fortunate I continue to inhabit these chambers with my own mind. Once Terrigan learns of any dead within these halls, he seeks to destroy their will with necromantic arts. Anything that lives, he slays. I could destroy Terrigan for you. That would, be not a, that would not be an easy task. You cannot destroy Terrigan by striking him down. It is his life force that sustains him, not his shell. Life force? Bleachers store their life force within specifically constructed phylacteries. Oh, not the phylactery again. I hate phylacteries. Oh, this is going to be troublesome. Most liches go to great lengths to protect their phylacteries, often placing them in remote lo remote locations where no no can where no can find them, then safeguarding them with enchantments. Terrigan, however, feels his phylactery is safest close to him, and he has placed it within a crypt in the halls of heroes. So all we have to do is reach there and destroy it. The phylactery is not something that can be destroyed by common means. To destroy it, you need to remove it from this plane, a daunting task to be certain. <sighs> no less daunting than the other impossibilities we've been forced to endure in coming north. How can we remove this phylactery from this plane? That is where fortune favors us. The very waters that Terrican is studying can destroy him as well. It lies within the Hall of Heroes, inside the tube of Jamoth. Any undead being, regardless of power, is pulled back to that dreadful plane of existence upon entry into the tomb. That's why I have never been able to enter the tomb myself. So I would need to take the phylactery inside Jammer's tomb to destroy Terrican? That doesn't sound too difficult. Ah, but to reach the Hall of Heroes, you will need to pass through the Tears of the Dead, where Terrican resides. Not only that, but the great door to the Hall of Heroes is locked, and I am certain Terrican possesses the key. If you defeat Terrigan's physical form, make haste for the Hall of Heroes, where he will only be subdued for a short while. I'll see what I can do. Let me ask you another question. Uh, who are you? I am known... Oh, we could have, you know, had that part of the conversation in the beginning, actually. Well, okay. I am known as Nolinor. While alive, I served as a priest of Moradin for our church here with Dawn's Deep. Specifically, I was given the title Artisan of the Forge, and it was my duty to maintain this place. I died defending this temple. I did not anticipate revisiting it in the afterlife. Why are you here now? The presence of Terrigan, a necromancer who has taken up residence in the Tears of the Dead, has quenched the flames that gave the Forge life. With the Forge cold, the spirits of the dead have become restless, forced from their tombs into servitude for that monster. Almost all of the dead of Dawn's Deep are now enslaved to Terrigan. I fear I'm the only one who remains free. What can be done? Terrigan's transformation into a leech has caused enough negative energy to be drawn to the area that even our forges and machines have been affected. Perhaps destroying Terrigan could bring the forge to life again. One thing is for certain, as long as the forge remains cold, the spirits of Dawn's Deep are denied of final rest. Okay, I'll see what I can do. We are in need of aid. Okay, and we have a temple here. Okay, we don't really need anything you can offer. So, yeah, well, that has been quite a long Orders. video, I must say. So, I think we should rest now. But there are several doors, actually. Which one should we take? I have no idea. 
but we will figure that out in the next video. So, thank you very much for watching and see you soon. Bye.